Hello, my name is Marie Zorman, and I'm curator here in Colombo, the Museum of the Edge Diocese of Cologne. And I'm responsible for the medieval art here in the house, but uh, we are working as a team together with all our uh, restorers, and uh, so we are not really fixed to our subject, to our main subject. And I'm now introducing you one of the main pieces. This is a cross of Hiriman and Ida. Hiriman was bishop, archbishop of Cologne in the second quarter of the 11th century. And Ida was his sister. She was the abbess of St. Maria Capitol, which is one of the main Romanesque churches here in, 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 um, in Cologne. They both belong to the family of the of Etzo. And Etzo was very it was a very famous and important count here in, in this area in, in, in the 10th century. And uh, he was, um, was one of the main families and he was related to the imperator. And so the family, they knew what they were and they had to show it. Hirman, um was, as Archbishop, also responsible for all the um, cloisters which were in the city, and so, and especially for the St. Maria Capitol, where his sister was abbess. And when the, they, they, they founded this, uh, um, this church and the abbey, and build a new building there. And if, if you have a new building and have a new church, you need everything you need for service. So the altarpiece and the um, um, and the cruises and the chalices and all the textiles. And so, and uh, very important also was the, the, the cross for uh, the uh, intuitors of the clerics for, for the service. And, uh, we think that maybe this cross was um, donated to the church by Hirman and Ida for, uh, the, uh, for the opening, so to say, of the church in 1049. And this was a very important event because um, the, uh, the imperator was there and the pope was there. And it was really very high-graded guests, and so they um, they had a, they needed a cross which uh, showed that the event is very important. That the family who um, paid for this event and who made this event possible was very important too. Mm -hmm. And maybe this cross played a role in, in, in this story. Um, and you, you can see that it's not a normal cross. It's it's very exceptional because it has a, a Christ on the cross, has a blue head, and uh, the blue head is of lapis lazuli, which is a very, very precious stone at the times. And um, it is said that possibly this uh, stone, which is an old one, it's from the first century, it's an antique head, mm, that maybe this, this head was in the treasury of the family, of the, F, the, of the Etzel family, um, that was uh, normal that at this time the important families had a treasury. And this, in this treasury there were very important things where they could show that they were wealthy and that they knew what they had. Mm -hmm. So I think they knew that this head was very old and that it was Lopez Lazuli. And it showed a woman, which is also very it's a woman from, that lived in the first century and was possibly, uh, uh, it can be identified as Livia, which is the wife of uh, the imperator Augustus, we can see here as a loan from the Römisch Germanisches Museum here in, in, in Cologne. We are making this exhibition at the moment together. And they gave this as a loan and we thought we, we put them together to, to bring the family to, together mm -hmm. again. And so maybe this is a head of Livia, and it is put into, into this cross as the head of Christ, which is 
very, very seldom. You, you can find antique stones in this processional crosses um, in, in this time, in, in Aachen, at the Lothar Cross, so right. the Henry's Cross in, um, in, in Berlin, which is uh, in fact from Basel. And, um, but, but they are never the, the head of Christ. Mm. They are right. the middle of the crosses, and so they tell, tell a story, but they say, tell a different story than this cross tells. And I think uh, what um, moved them to, to take this, this stone as a head of Christ, maybe, yeah, we would like to have that it, they took it they took it because uh, it was the head of a woman mm. <laughs> and it was for a, a woman's cloister. But um, I think that maybe it was not so important mm. because the gender questions at that time didn't play a role at all. Um, and it didn't play a role that it was a, the head of a woman because um, God was no woman and was no man. Mm. So it doesn't take it. It wasn't very important. But uh, what maybe was important that it was old and that it was blue. Mm. Mm. Because uh, blue is the color of the sky and therefore it's the color of God. So maybe they, they chose this head because it, was, it, it, it meant something. The color meant something and mm. shows that this here is no normal human being but that it is the, the son of God who is uh, dying at the cross as a human being. And the other thing was that they showed by this, um, by, by presenting this uh, head in such a really important part of the cross and at the front, that uh, they had things like this in their treasury. Mm. And so that they are a, a, an important um, family that went back to the um, Roman emperor uh, to the Etonian Roman Emperor. And uh, so they perhaps told the story, we got this thing by the Emperor and so we, because we were related to him. And that was very important because it was uh, when, when Otto died, Otto III died, it was not really clear who he became the follower. Hmm. And uh, uh, then Henry made, <laughs> made the race, but but he was, um, uh, and, and Etzo didn't fight him for that, but uh, Etzo also had, uh, had some ambitions mm. at that time, but, but he didn't follow them. So, um, I know, I told that, that maybe the cross was for the year 1049, but um, if you look at the back, we can see the donor sitting at the foot of the cross under the feet of uh, Mary, who was the patroness of St. Mary in Capital. And uh, he is uh, kneeling there, and we can see that he has his crozier in his hand. But when we see his clothing, we don't see what we expect, the meter and the um, a casula and mm -hmm. uh, what what you need to be a, a bishop. That could tell us that uh, at this time when the cross was made, uh, Hirimann was was bishop already, and he became bishop because um, the the king told him to be the bishop and he got this crozier by the king. Mm. But the clothing, his liturgical clothes, he gets by the Pope. So perhaps he was already in, invented by the king, but not by the Pope. And that could mean that the cross already was ordered in 1036. Mm. So we, it's, it's a little bit difficult <laughs> to, to close this gap between 1036 and 1049. That's the work of the, the, the researchers of the future, I think. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you.